Hello everyone, welcome to another video on the channel. Welcome to a follow-up video to our recent ABS default versus ABS week video. We'll consider this part two. Thank you very much to everyone that's commented on that video. It's been good to hear your thoughts and feelings on it. Uh, a couple of things that did come up in the comments though is that people did ask or did comment that they felt they didn't have as much uh, control over the brakes using weak compared to default when it came to wet weather conditions and also people inquired about how the tyre wear or was there any tyre wear difference between using ABS weak and ABS default because obviously braking does contribute to tyre wear in Gran Turismo 7 so I thought you know what let's put these things to the test so we're going to test the wet weather and we're going to test tyre wear. First up is going to be the wet weather test. We're going to use the Jaguar F-Type from Group 3 around the Ring Sprint. We're going to do five laps. Equal conditions mode is going to be on. It's R05 is the weather settings. And tyre wear is going to be at times five. And fuel is going to be at times one. So with these conditions, the track is pretty wet, it has to be said. And it's actually the full wet tyres that we're going to use because the wetness indicator is right up at that second bar. Uh, and what we basically did here is I actually ran this test a combined total of six times. I did it three times on default and three times on week, alternating between the two. And what you tend to find with wet weather is you just get a little bit faster each and every time you run out. You just get more confidence in the car, more confidence in the brakes, and you just learn a little bit more with each and every lap and start to go faster and faster. I did use traction control on one as well because I did find that it just gave me a little bit more confidence in the car. Obviously the back end is very loose with the wet conditions so definitely felt a little bit of an advantage there. But that was the, the results of ABS on default. The best lap was 145.1 .1 and our finishing time is 845.8. So moving on to ABS week, you can see our best lap is a 145.0, so it's certainly within margin of error of our best lap in the default conditions. And our finishing time is actually going to come in one tenth quicker, so I would say there's a negligible dif difference in speed when it comes to using default versus week in the wet conditions, but I will definitely mention that with default I felt more confident in the big braking zones, for example turn one. At this track is kind of it's a big braking zone and it's also slightly downhill and coming into the chicane as well i just felt with weak the back end which is a little bit too loose for my liking at times and that was kind of corrected a little bit by using default so possibly given that there's a negligible speed difference between the two braking systems i would maybe use the safety net of using default when it comes to heavy wet conditions so moving on to our tyre wear test, we're still going to remain in the Jaguar F-Type from Group 3. We're going to head to the Red Bull ring for this one. We're going to have equal conditions mode on, of course, so the conditions are the same for both runs. We're going to use the racing soft tyres. We're going to have tyre wear all the way up at times 15 and fuel at times 1. So I thought the best way to test this was to set up a multiplayer lobby with the settings that we have just explained there. Uh, basically jump in to the car from the pits, do a couple of acclimatisation laps, maybe five or six just to get used to the car and track combination. Once we're used to that, leave the pits and basically drive around the track in a consistent manner using the same braking points until one of the tyres expired. And that's exactly what we did. So the tyre that does all the work around the Red Bull ring appears to be the rear left. So that was the tyre that was going to give up the ghost first and we jump on board with our ABS week run here. You can see we have just about used up all the tread on that tyre coming towards the end of lap 8. Now there is still a little bit of a sliver there. We're going to get through turn 1 before that tyre goes completely. So up through turn 1 we come. So yeah, it's a good test this actually. It was worthwhile testing this out I think because braking is something that uses tyre wear in Gran Turismo 7, so if there is a difference between ABS week and ABS default, definitely worth noting it down. But that's that tyre gone now, halfway down that straight, just about where you sort of turn off to the short course, that tyre was gone completely. So we'll, we'll call that 9.2 laps for ABS week. So moving on to our test of ABS default for tyre wear, I did expect this to maybe get a little bit further than ABS week, but actually it was to turn out to be the opposite case. 
Whereas we got to about 9.2 laps with week, we're only going to get to about 8.9 with default. It's not a massive difference and I can probably explain it by the fact that in the test for default we actually had a couple of slides coming out of turn 1 and with tyre wear being at times 15 that was probably going to have a fairly detrimental effect so I'm fairly confident in saying that the difference between default and weak when it comes to tyre wear is negligible and it seems to be pretty much the same. But that's the conclusion for both tests, or both tests concluded. Let's just have a little bit of a discussion and conclusion about what we found. So the wet weather test, in terms of lap time, in terms of finishing time, both of the braking systems coming in with very similar results. But what I would say that default felt a little bit safer, probably a good bit safer in heavy braking zones in the wet conditions. And so for me, Possibly if I was doing a race that was in full wet conditions, I would be maybe considering using a default and having that safety net. When it came to the tyre wear test, we did actually get a little bit further up with ABS weak compared to default, but we could actually explain that difference by the fact we had a couple of slides out of turn one with default. And so I'm fairly confident in saying the difference in tyre wear is pretty much negligible and certainly nothing to worry about. And so my overall conclusion of this test is that I wouldn't recommend one over the other. I think they're just basically alternatives to each other. But the more I use ABS weak, the more I see the benefits of it. I feel like I'm getting a little bit faster. There is a few disadvantages to it. So as I said, give it a try, see what you think and maybe it will be something you might want to start using in the future. But hopefully you've enjoyed these videos. If you have, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Thank you very much for watching. Catch you on the next one. Cheers, bye now.